Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. So I have the border on here and I am so, so happy. Ah, I've got the inner border of the teal and it's, it's, it's good. It's good. Uh, yeah, you know, it does blend with the, ch with this, the checker, you know, the, the, um, diagonal, you know, that, that makes the chain it does blend in with that, but I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, rather than tr picking a different fabric for there, I think that this just works. Plus I am going to go with binding for that in the same material. So I've got the binding already made. So we've got the binding made and I've marked, I'm using my wide back from Promise Me with the Great Big Roses, which is the wide back that goes with the border. So here it is, kind of opened, ready to go. So look at that. Ah, oh, so excited. So excited to have that on the back. And I love it. It's a great size too. It's a great size to be used or to hang on the wall, whichever, which I consider using it. <laughs> So I do mark the top. That's one thing I do because this is going to a long armor and to the spa. It's going to the spa to be long arm. And my friend Karen, you know, she doesn't, she hasn't made the quilt. So, you know, it's better for me to tell her what is the top, particularly if I, my backing might be directional or maybe there's one way I want to have it. Or even like sometimes when you make a top, you might have something that you really want that image coming a certain way, but it may not be super obvious to anybody else. So mark your quilt. So I've got it marked top and top on here. This will go in the binding basket, which is quite full. <laughs> <laughs> April probably won't have a lot of bindings done. Just putting that out there for the universe. Um, being that I'll be gone for a while later in the month, uh, it's just not going to happen. Uh, so I will be in May, probably in June, really trying to get some bindings kicked out, get them, get them done. Now, what I did is I did film a little bit over the weekend, what I was doing on Saturday afternoon, uh, because I got a finish done. So let's take a look at that. So it's Saturday afternoon and I was thinking, I want to do, there's a couple of things I want to do. One, I want to do the backing for the March block a day, the pink one, the cheerful. Uh, I want to quilt that front door, ba um, you know, block that I did. And I'd also like to look at that counter over there because uh, I, I need to organize that. So it is what, 2.30 on Saturday afternoon. Uh, so I, and, it's, and the sun is out and I've I cracked the door open. It's a pretty nice temperature. We're waiting for some really heavy winds to come through, uh, if they do. I know you all have had them, but you know, they keep saying we're going to. Uh, so I thought, okay, what, what can I, what do, what's the best impact and the most fun? I thought, most fun? Let's do the wall hanging. Let's do the door hanging. So I went and got a piece of yellow for the backing of this, and it wasn't quite long enough, but uh, I didn't have to add too much. So it just had to cut a little strip. And then it wasn't quite long enough, so I just added a square on there to the strip, just so I would, you know, didn't all of a sudden get out to that edge and go like, ugh which also means it's gonna be like a bunch of seams in that corner, but I'm like, okay, whatever. We'll just, uh, we'll have them, we'll just shift it over enough so that the seams aren't all like right in the point or something where I'm trying to do the binding. All right, so I've got this and I actually could move it up even a bit so that this seam that's running along here is not so close to the edge so that it is further, further down, further down in it. You know, think about those things a little bit. All right, so then I then I so I have this piece of yellow left. Uh, then I thought I'm just going to scrap all these battings together. Whatever, I'm going to take the biggest ones, and let's just see if I can make this work because I don't feel like going upstairs and getting batting and cutting another batting. So, anyways, I have to take this off after I so nicely arranged it. I will just arrange it again. Uh, but okay, well that's weird. I don't know why why I have that. So we'll just get rid of, there we go. We want to deal with at least deal with rectangles. And yes, there's tape you can use and yes, you can do all kinds of things to do this together, but I just lay them all side by side because that works for me. It is not very much work to do that. And uh, I don't have to take a lot of time then. 
Okay, so if this goes long, then that means I just have this chunk. And remember, this is a wall hanging. I'm going to quilt it. It will get enough quilting on it to, um, you know, handle everything. So that's a little short. So rather than doing, you know, two pieces down here like this, let me just see if I have one that is wide enough and long enough. So here's a, here's a longer one. Is it wide enough? Yeah, because I don't need to come all the way down. So this is wide enough. So basically, this is what I have. And I will have enough quilting for a door banner that it will keep this together. It'll keep it together fine. All right, so once again, I want to get above that seam up here so that I don't have this seam, the backing seam, right at the very top edge. You know, I don't want it here. So it's further down, seams like right down here. So that's good. And everything has, does it have batting? No, see like here, I have to be careful because I'm piecing all this. I've got batting over here, but it's a little, little shy right there. And the overlap, there's enough overlap, I can just pull it out a little bit. Okay, all right. So I could pin baste this or spray baste it. And I'll probably just do, take it over to the iron and just do a little bit of spray basting. And then some wave stitches and I will have a door, a door banner. Yes, so excited. It's very out to the edge here. I might have to, I might have to pull this out a little bit. Let's check that out. So I got it done. I did the uh, wave stitch vertical and I basically went on this seam and then I did the seam that's kind of for the block. Then I split it and then split it again. So that was my approach uh, to the wave stitch on this guy and the backing. So I have my dowel rod with the ends now painted and what I'm doing is I'm using a 12 weight Orofil uh, thread, which is like the weight of about, whoops, <laughs> which is like about like pearl cotton, 12, maybe a little thicker. And uh, I am doing it double. So I tied on this end and then I will put, put it through the hanging sleeve. So I have the hanging sleeve here and there's a video on the hanging sleeve. Just put in my search bar hanging sleeve and you can watch what that is. It's just really simple. And now I will tie this guy with a little give. I don't want it so tight because what I'm going to do is there's a nail on the front door. And what I do is I twist this around the nail once, uh, but I have, to I have to tie it first. I have to knot it on this um, you know, hook here on the end. I have to knot it first before I put it on the door, but I need that little bit of give so that um, it, so I can lift it and twirl it around the screw that's on the front door, which is what I hang it on. Now, you might have different ways. People use command strips uh, on their front doors. That seems to work really well. We just happen to have a screw on the front door. Like, I don't know, like for a long time. So it works well for this. So I will uh, take it on out and I'll get the other camera and meet you at my front door. And there it is. Look at it. It looks so good. So let me just show you. There's the screw up there. And you can tell that the red Orofil thread blends in. And for those of you who have been wanting me to paint the dowel rod, Greg used that little tiny paintbrush with his little tiny modeling red paint jar and painted the ends because then he got bored. He's like, going to paint the whole thing. It's too much. <laughs> so I will just trim off that little bit of thread that's hanging there, brought my scissors, and this project is done. It was so good. I have to tell you, uh, Barbara, our ambassador, totally motivated me to just go and get that banner done for the front door because she was working on one and sharing one uh, that she was doing. And I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I mean, it sat here for so long and I didn't work on it. I made that, I made the top, but I didn't finish it. So I'm super happy. And I drove up to the house uh, yesterday and I could see it and I was like, oh, it looks so good. <laughs> That one really does kind of remind me of a barn quilt uh, just because of the block. You know, all the barn quilts are kind of like a basic, you know, um, traditional quilt block. All right, we are scrapping this is happiness day <clears throat> and it's a house. Oh, so good, so good. I will take this down, put up my, here they are, 
put up my scrappiness is happiness units because I am getting these sewn to each other and to the sashings wherever possible. So it makes it a lot easier to put them up there. And we'll take a look at some house fabric. Before I hang that up, I thought you might like to see the binding basket that I'm going to put this in because I'm back to putting everything in the basket again, rather than some of them with the quilt, etc. But the one thing I did not really do was uh, compare these to the things on the shelf. I'm just not going to worry about that. What I'm going to do is get that down a few quilts and then I'll go and compare things. So this is a label for the uh, Jolly Bar. Uh, that we just did the stat sampler uh, that's to go with that and uh you know so here there's a bunch of stuff and there's some of the there's like just the fabric i'm not really sure i know what this is for and then you know so there's some randomness in there but i and i think i didn't use this i think i didn't I may have cut again and didn't use that. So that's one that, you know, I'm a little suspect on, <clears throat> on that guy. So anyway, here's another one. Here's another label, something. And I know that's right now at the spa, that one. And here is it's the, the pink, I mean, the orange um, stripe goes with this. Those are together. So maybe I'll try to kind of fold them in there. That's probably where they were and I just drug them out. Okay, <clears throat> so I thought you'd like to see that. You can help me remember that all my binding is in the binding basket. <laughs> Scrappiness is happiness. This is what we've been working on for a while. <laughs> Beginning of the year or did we actually start in December? I can't remember, but it's been a while and we are, we are winding down. We are on the lower quarter bunch of blocks. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we are on the house this week, which is called the neighborhood quilt. So here is, whoops, here is the uh, house block itself. And then there it is in a full quilt that Lori Holt did for the book. Uh, and then there's a little close up. You can see the fabrics. Now we will not have a grass underneath. Do you notice that? All of the houses have a grass underneath them for the repeat in, in the quilt. And that lets them, you know, sort of have a place to set. And that's pretty nice. But for the sampler, we're not doing that. So we don't have any need for that part at all. And also, if you had not noticed, this is a nice spiral bound book that's published by uh, so Emma, which is the Fat Quarter Shop's publishing part of their business. Okay, let's look at my fabrics because, you know, now I'm, unless I get to a really tight spot color wise, I'm pretty much can do what I want because I've got the yellows, the aquas, the blues, throwing in the dots, throwing in the stripes. I'm pretty good with whatever I pick. So it will be on the blue background. And this is, I am, I am hoping I have enough because I think I bought just a little bit more than what I said for background. And, and I think I added together everything. So there's still, there's, you know, not tons of blocks and I don't know how much of them have a lot of background, but I have like a yard. So I think I'm going to be using most of this up. So here is my background. And so it's a house. So I'm thinking, Wait a second, let me get the picture again. Uh, yeah, so I am thinking, first of all, what I wanted to do was just go for the roof. You know, what would the roof be? Because that's kind of an impact piece. And I thought, oh, the plaids would be good for the roof. Do a plaid. Then I thought, oh, what about the yellow plaid for the roof? I like that better, the yellow plaid for the roof. And then the, the chimneys will be the stripe don't know if it'll go vertical or horizontal, maybe vertical. So now the body, I decided I would use this aqua that is that was from one of my fabric lines. So that's pulling that in. And then the windows will be the dots. And then I started thinking about the door. Well, I want the door different. Like the door is colored here the same as the chimneys. Now, I don't think that they're the same, but she may have used the same fabrics as the chimney. Um, so I could use a stripe door, you know, like a stripe door that might be cute. Or I could go and do the blue gingham for the door and then the dots for the window. So I'm going to check that, see what I like after I cut everything else. I will cut the door last. Okay. I'm going to get ready and sew it. 
This is a darling house block. It, look at this, so cute. So I did go ahead with the gingham, although I do think the stripe would have also been pretty cool in here. Uh, the stripe is wider, I mean the chimney rather is wider, so the stripe width, I decided to go this way instead of vertical. I just thought it looked good when I was auditioning it. Now the block goes on this far side over here. Far side, I believe it goes somewhere right in here. Ah, uh, there, there. Yeah. So I'm gonna have a, let me just get the other camera and we'll look at it straight on. Here we go. Oh, it looks really good there. That light aqua there is great. I love how that looks there. So here's the whole thing. And there is actually a strip in here and then there's more blocks on the left. So this is wider. I mean, I could shove it over a little bit here, you can see, but uh, I'm, it's, the quilt is a little bit wider than my actual working space. But all in all, like this is, oh, this is one of my favorites right now. This is so much fun. I'm loving the color combination of that aqua and the yellows and the navy, yeah, on that blue, that denim blue. So just show you in here, there it is in its spot. So I have a little mail call to wrap up. Just one. This is from Ellen in Tennessee. So look at this nice card. Oh, so pretty. She sent me something super lovely. I didn't open it up all the way, but I did look a little bit because I read the note. So first of all is this beautiful scarf. Look. Look at the house. Look, we're doing a house block today. And timing wise, is this not perfect? This is like so cute. Look at this. And then she sent me two pieces. She collects Liberty of London fabric. Oh my goodness. And she sent me a couple. Oh, there might be more than two pieces. I didn't open it. See, I didn't open it, but she sent me these. <gasps> okay, you ready to look? I am ready. I am ready. Oh my goodness. So exciting. Now this one is very detailed. Oh, there are a bunch of little pieces. Yeah, so there's a bunch. Look how detailed that is. And then here's like a city, city. Oh, I've got turn it around. Oh, look, 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 look. Yes, I need to find the perfect thing to do with this Liberty of London fabric. A lot of people will do things like, you know, hexagons or some sort of English paper piecing project. I mean, I'd rather sew something on the machine, I think. Look at that. Here's one, look, there's little, little elephants, elephants, and a horse rider. And then, oh my gosh, one of the bigger prints, which has the city. Is it a New York City print? So the Statue of Liberty, the Brooklyn Bridge. Look at this. Oh, gorgeous. So I am super excited, Ellen. Thank you so much for thinking of me and sharing some of your precious pieces of fabric and your gorgeous scarf, the gorgeous scarf. Okay, so this is scrap happy. <laughs> Scrappiness is happiness. There we go. Whoops. Oh, dang. The block fell off just as I'm picking it up. Okay, so we've got your block today. You could do a whole quilt of these houses. <clears throat> Super cute. And if you don't have a quilt on your front door, I challenge you to do it. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.